All right, so I'm going to start with this, uh, the right hand rock. And you can see the, the advantage of saving those PSDs. I already used this once, so I just copy paste that element. It's already been matted, I'm putting it in my painting, saved myself a whole lot of time. So I'm going to place it over there on top of the, the, the beach element that I had that already had some rocks. And I'm going to paint, in, paint out you know, the shoreline, try to integrate this in to the painting. Maybe use a, a soft brush because maybe we want to use the bottom of the beach element that we had that had rocks in it because they integrate into the water and then use this on top to try to keep as much of that plate as possible. So we may try some different things here, skew it into perspective. Again, we want this element to to point to our focal point. So that's that's another key thing here. This is going to act as our blocker to keep our eye in the focal area. So grade it down just like how we have been before. I sped this up a lot because it's pretty much the same things you guys have been watching. Cooling it down, taking out the warmth, um, color correcting it down to dark, and then we have you know the beach rock underneath it to, to key off of the value and, the, and the, the color of it. So that helped a lot. Again, trying to figure out how this element um, you know, comes out of the water. So we're going to have to play with that silhouette a little bit so it feels natural looking at what's underneath. Can we salvage anything from this? You know, Maybe use it as a base and then put this on top. So trying different things um, to get this element to work as clean as possible. Like I can slap that in there and you know be done with it, but I want to make sure you know I've, I've used the best option for the integration of this thing. And that's looking at every every option possible. So I'm going to use a nice hard brush because this is a rock. We don't want to use a soft brush. These are hard edges, so we're going to use a hard brush for it. You pick the brush that's appropriate for the element that you're uh, that you're cleaning up. And uh, I want to create a little bit more, you know, shape to this thing, not so it's not so flat element. I want to make, you know, ins and outs of this rock um, coming in and out of the water, a little bit more shape. It adds to the realism um, instead of having just a flat element right there sitting on top of the water with this, you know, uh, hard edges. Just makes it look fake. So playing with this element again, seeing where we can place it for that bottom edge to feel right and still you know feel like it's pointing at that you see I used a perspective to kinda help me point that element to our focal point again I'm screening a light layer on top make it a high contrast bumping up the white and cooling it down taking out the reds see if we can add some top light to this add a little bit more form it was feeling a little flat And here, I want a little bit higher element here. So I just duplicated that element with the color correct and stretched it up. And you can see we got away with the stretching. You know, I wouldn't recommend stretching your photos that much, but in this case, it works. And uh, we get a nice balancing element in there to keep your eye to the focal point. And we put it right on top of what's underneath it. So, and those two elements uh, clearly kind of flow seamlessly together because it's the same thing. And we did the top light again for this new element because it was stretched and made it a little bit cooler so we have you know um, some wet spots on that thing catching a little bit more of that um, skylight this rock just color correcting it maybe it felt a little too dark we want to bring back some of that information back in here back into um, our rock Doing some more color corrects to that hill, just trying to get it right. Gave me a hard time, that thing. A little bit more adjustments here to this hill. Now I'm going to start putting in some mid-ground uh, palm trees. And these are very stylized shapes, so I'm painting it in myself. And I'm just picking a flat color from that element. Uh, I'm going to warm it up a little bit because, you know, the bark is a little bit warm. And I'm just painting it on a separate layer, a nice hard brush, painting the shape that I want based on, you know, some of that reference we looked at from uh, Sleeping Beauty, getting some nice design shapes and micro composition. So we're going to group, you know, three trees here, creating thick and thin like we took a look at in the, when we were uh, dissecting those design images. And this is just for the bark. 
um, playing around with shape and making sure you know those those lines point to our focal area and positioning it and here we're gonna this is what we're gonna use for our palm trees this is an element that looked like a hurricane that I showed you earlier we're just gonna create a high contrast mat again and we're just gonna use the palm uh, the branch of this thing copy paste that over so we have this element in our thing uh, in our PSD here and I'm gonna use this frequently so I'm just gonna copy and paste that from that element within it and rotate it so it looks like the branches are you know worn down and sagging and using this element to our advantage copy paste another element in here we want to create interesting grouping and uh, silhouettes on this thing so this drooping uh, the drooping branches are gonna help here I'm gonna clean this element up because it was low res because it's going to need a lot of cleanup to this. Again, not staying precise because this element's going to have fog and it's going to be knocked down and it's pretty far away in our in our painting, so I'm not too worried about making it, you know, super perfect. Just as long as those dirty white edges are gone, I'm happy. Making a fit to our branches here, our uh, bark. And color correcting the values of this thing, making sure the black levels are the same. So the tricky part of this is that the Atmo we have on our shoreline is going to hit the branches, but it doesn't go high enough to hit those palms. So we may have to color correct those palms accordingly to look like you know they've been hit by uh, atmosphere. So color correcting it, you know, trying to get that color. So I sampled the color again, like we did with the with that small hill in the background, and bringing down the value to make those the fill light the correct color playing around with this thing as well trying to get the right look creating a top layer maybe you know bringing back some of that some of those branches that are getting hit by the top light and maybe some color back in here it's feeling a little too monochromatic seeing how that works readjusting going back and forth trying to get this to work with color correction We are adding a little bit more atmosphere to this. That's why you know the values are so different from the bark. The bark is so much more, um, so much darker than the top. And you'll see when I turn on the atmosphere. So I decided to paint the light in. It is far back, so we can use our brushes just to paint some color back in there. So it's not so monochromatic. It felt really dead, and um, yeah, just monochromatic. So we wanted to add some color to this thing just to help it kind of look interesting with some visual interest again pushing and pulling this thing to make it look right I turn on the Atmo and you see how you know that Atmo knocks those brand the bark into the appropriate uh, right values may not be the best way to do it but it just happen to work this way cleaning this element up again Again, we want to create an interesting grouping here, an interesting silhouette. We're always mindful of how these things are grouped together to create an interesting silhouette, not just aimlessly putting it. Even if it doesn't look like it's sitting on, on that bark, you know, we're just going to play with the silhouette and make sure it's, uh, it's interesting. Cut that crazy color because my clipping mask got a little messed up there. Let's merge that down. So maybe it was a little too warm for back there. Color correct a little bit closer to the value that was in the hill and the color. Adjust it, bring it down, make it look like it's sagging a little bit more. Now we're just going to play with the shapes of these things. Stylizing the shape, make it thinner, thicker, helping it integrate into that, into the rock formation, make it look like it's sitting in there. Group it, and what I'm going to do now is create a paint layer. So I'm going to paint all the, the overgrown you know, vines that are coming out of this thing again with the same color and a hard brush you see me creating a hard brush there because I want this thing to be sharp helping with this edge detail too just helps a little bit you know break up that line you know maybe some some round vines to help 
yeah, that helps kind of break the, the, the verticals. Erasing and, you know, painting in the vines creates some interest there. It really helps this overgrown feel. Another thing I'm going to do here, and for stylization, is create these almost um, contour lines, and they help with visualization. Enough, sorry, stylization. Um, and we saw that in some of the the reference images we looked at from Paula Sane and Sleeping Beauty. It, it says just like these contour lines to help with the stylization, and you know it just adds a little something. You know we don't notice it, but it's there. <laughs> 